Mike Bunce is the head of research for Powertrain for Mali in North America. And Mike, thanks for joining us for this interview today. Thanks, John. My pleasure. Uh, Molly has been working on this technology called jet ignition. I got to ask you, what the heck is that all about? <laughs> sure. Well, uh, Molly jet ignition uh, is the name of the technology. We call it MJI. Um, and uh, MJI is a technology that we use for um, primarily for gasoline uh, engines. Um, and it's meant to uh, improve efficiency. Uh, it does that fairly effectively. Um, we've seen uh, in kind of baseline engines, when we apply the MJI technology to it, um, in kind of its high efficiency guys, we're seeing uh, close to about 20%, uh, maybe more uh, percent improvement in efficiency. And that translates well to fuel consumption as well. So uh, kind of a 20% increase in miles per gallon too, if you like. That's a gigantic leap forward. As you know, if automakers get three, four, five percent, they're pretty happy. 30% is astonishing. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's fairly or 20%. high. Twenty percent. percent. Yeah, it's it's uh, fairly high. Um, it's certainly competitive with kind of the sort of state of the industry research on really advanced uh, combustion engines. Um, so it's uh, we like to view it as kind of a a nice entry uh, in that kind of roster of technologies that are looking for uh, kind of these massive step changes in efficiency. So explain what it's like. I mean, I, I think everybody watching knows the the fundamentals of fuel injection. Sure. You, you have this injector and you cram fuel in there under super high pressure and then atomize it as it sprays out. How is jet ignition different? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's somewhat similar to that type of concept. It uses uh, what's called a pre-chamber um, technology. Um, for uh, people who are, are familiar with uh, old diesel engines from kind of the early 1900s, uh, pre-chambers should be somewhat familiar. They're used for kind of a different purpose here, but essentially it's a very, very small chamber. We're talking about something that's maybe the size of a thimble. Um, it's only a, a couple of uh, cubic centimeters in volume, very small. And that's kind of where your uh, combustion event starts. So you have a spark plug in there. You have a very small fuel injector as well. So you're kind of burning this very small quantity of fuel and air that pre-chamber then kind of opens up into the regular cylinder um, that you would have. It's got a, a nozzle. Um, so what happens is these products that are burning in this sort of initial event, they exit out of the pre-chamber uh, as very high-speed jets. Um, it almost kind of looks like, you know, just a series of jets coming out of uh, the top of the, uh, top of the roof of the cylinder. Um, and that's what ignites the rest of the contents um, in the uh, main cylinder the same way that a spark plug would normally. So it's kind of cascading uh, different uh, combustion events. Okay. Uh, you say it's or, uh, acting like a spark plug would, but yeah. clearly this has got to be a whole lot better than a spark plug. It must be much more complete combustion. It does. Yeah, that's right. And imagine, if you will, you take a spark plug um, and you kind of place that spark plug sort of anywhere you want inside the combustion chamber. So you can kind of place it sort of magically in space and then you can multiply it. So you can have six of them or seven or eight of them. That's essentially how this concept works, except now instead of spark plugs, you're using these very fast moving jets to accomplish the same thing. So these jets then start combusting when they reach kind of the center of the chamber. So you have very well distributed uh, ignition events and there are multiples of them as well. Um, so you end up with uh, very, very fast burning inside the chamber, very complete combustion as well. And that allows you to then ignite uh, mixtures that normally wouldn't be very ignitable with just a regular spark plug. So it sounds to me like uh, you need to do some sort of modification to the cylinder head to put in this pre-chamber. Is, is that about it, though? Uh, that's right. Um, it depends. We've got kind of two different variants um, of the MJI technology, and one of them is sort of like a drop-in solution. You essentially would take out the spark plug and you put something else in its place, which is this uh, this pre-chamber assembly. Um, so that one is is uh, designed to be, um, uh, you know, not very intensive uh, for changes uh, for the for the engine. There's another variant that requires some other changes, and then because you're operating in such a high efficiency environment. Now you have to start thinking about things like uh, turbochargers, after treatment, a lot of systems on the engine. Uh, it'd be beneficial to start changing them just because you're operating at such high efficiency that the temperatures that the body of the engine would see are now vastly lower. Oh, interesting. So this would 
maybe make you able to use uh, less turbocharger boost maybe and get the same power or am I just talking crazy here? No, no, it, it kind of depends uh, on where you are. Essentially, the turbocharger is, you know, whatever turbocharger you're using for kind of a base conventional gasoline engine is no longer optimized for this kind of new high efficiency lean environment. So you have to change it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go to some uh, significantly more expensive turbocharger. It just means that you have to change the system a bit. So, you know, if you can imagine in a typical gasoline engine, a significant amount of fuel energy is lost as heat. That's why those engines get so hot. Now we're taking kind of the heat that you would lose uh, in that engine, cutting it by half, essentially. So the engine's much, much cooler. All the systems on a conventional engine are designed to be able to kind of work with that high level of heat. Now they have to be changed a bit. Hmm, very interesting. And is those two difference that, differences that you described, the difference between your passive system and your active system? Yeah, that's right, John. So the uh, passive system is, is our more kind of drop-in solution. Um, and we call it passive. Uh, this is just a, a pre-chamber volume, like I described, but with a spark plug in it. Um, we use this system to give us uh, you know, very fast burn rates uh, inside the chamber. So very rapid burning, very good, complete combustion. Um, and we get kind of a nice efficiency benefit from that. And you're, um, you're calling it passive because you just take the spark plug out and screw this new thing in? Essentially, yeah. The fuel delivered to the pre-chamber is delivered passively, which means that you inject the fuel into the cylinder like you would normally. And uh, when the piston starts moving upwards, you're dependent on that piston to actually, you know, inadvertently push the fuel into the pre-chamber. Um, the other system that we have is called an active system. Uh, this system has its own fuel injector dedicated to the pre-chamber. So there are actually two fuel injectors for each cylinder that you have. So there's, there's an added cost associated with that. But what that means is now the air-fuel ratio that you're using in the pre-chamber can be completely different than the air-fuel ratio that you use in the main cylinder. So you can end up with kind of a, a con, sort of a conventional, very ignitable air-fuel ratio in the pre-chamber. The pre-chamber begins the process and you get these jets out, but now the jets have such much, such higher ignition energy than a regular spark plug that they can now they can now start burning contents that are much less ignitable. So we operate what we call very lean in the main chamber. So you're operating with a significant excess of air. This is something that normally a spark plug would not be able to ignite, but now we can. Which means that you can clean up emissions, not just get great fuel economy. Yeah, exactly. So um, one of the, the, well, kind of two major emissions benefits we get from this active lean system is our uh, nitrogen oxides, our NOx emissions go down substantially. So we're seeing engine out reductions of 98%, um, significantly uh, reduced NOx emissions. Um, for passenger car, that's not, oddly enough, that's not quite enough to be able to do away with uh, an after treatment device for NOx. Uh, you still actually need one just because the the uh, standards are so strict. But for other industries, especially kind of stationary engines or, or small engines, you might actually be able to get away with not using a catalyst at all uh, in that case. And then the other major emission that goes down substantially is carbon monoxide. Our carbon monoxide emissions uh, reductions are greater than 99%. It's, it's a pretty massive reduction in those as well. Man, that's impressive. So is any automaker using this? Is it in production? Um, so we are uh, partnering with a couple of um, uh, automakers right now to try to put both passive and active systems into production. Um, there's you know, a good precedent for kind of older versions of the technology entering production. So there's a, a famous version in the uh, mid 70s um, by Honda that was known as the CVCC. Um, and that's kind of a good sort of precedent technology um, for this. Uh, obviously, the uh, um, the knowledge at the time didn't necessarily allow for the type of optimizations that we're looking at here. So there are there are automakers that have productionized it in the past. Um, we also have a couple of uh, racing programs that are using um, different uh, MJI variants, and they've oh talk about that. <laughs> well, we we have a couple. Unfortunately, I, I can't really talk about uh, most of them, but uh, one that has been publicized is uh, our work with the Ferrari Formula One team. Uh, a few years back, uh, and we worked with them to integrate um, an MJI unit uh, into uh, their F1 car. Um, and that that's won a couple of races um, with that unit in there. So we were very happy with uh, with that success. No kidding. And, you know, Formula One engines are revving at what? These days, probably 16, 17,000 RPM. That, that, that's got to be a 
quite the test to be able to pass that with some sort of pre-chamber arrangement. Yeah, we uh, we view the the motorsport um, uh, applications, and really this is true for any technology, not not just MJI, but we view those applications as kind of the ultimate proving ground um, for some of these technologies, especially in terms of durability, but also in you know the ability of this concept to be able to run at all sorts of engine speeds and loads, like you would see in a passenger car. Passenger car engines require a fairly wide range of speeds and loads, and then motorsport applications are kind of just that on steroids. So it's a very rapid uh, kind of technology accelerator for us. Real good. Mike, what a fascinating technology. Thank you so much for taking the time to bring us up to speed with what Jet Ignition's all about. Thanks, John. I appreciate it.